students we are back again with another lesson on sampling you will recall that in the first lesson we looked at the basic concepts you should understand in sampling today we will look at different types of sampling we will start with random sampling simple random stratified random and cluster sampling we should be able to make a distinction between random and non-random sampling. In this lesson, we will consider only random sampling. The next lesson will be about non-random sampling. If you want to proceed with a simple random sampling technique, what you can do is take the names of all the persons in the population, say 1000 persons in the population, you write each name on a small piece of paper and you put it in a box or in any container and from there you draw at random any say 100 names that come one after another it means that you have taken the list of all the persons and put them in the same container and every person in that container had equal chance of being selected. Therefore, we can say that a simple random sample is one where the names are drawn one by one from a lot in a box that contains all the names of the people who form part of the population the researcher is interested in. Each person has an equal chance of being selected. I just told you that in a simple random sampling, each member of the population has equal chance of being selected. What does that mean? Let's take an example. Suppose you have 1000 persons in a population. The first person has a chance of 1 in 1000 of being selected. The second one, 1 in 999. The third one, 1 in 998 and it goes on like this. In other words, statistically speaking, each person has equal chance of being selected. However, though the chance of being selected is equal for each member of the population, there's also a risk in simple random sampling. For instance, it might happen that by chance a person from a significant group within that population does not get selected. Let me explain. Let's take an example of a school where we have children from grade 7 to grade 13. The table shows here grade 7, 200, grade 8, 200, grade 9, 150, grade 10, 150, grade 11, 100, grade 12 and 13, 100, 100 each which makes a population of 1000. If we put these 1000 names in a box and pick 100 at random, it may be that by chance grade 9 may not be picked up at all or you may find more from grade 13 and less from grade 7. How do we avoid this problem so that there is equal proportion from each grade selected in the sample? There is a method which will allow us to ensure that each category within a group is entitled to a number equal to its proportion in that group. We call it the stratified random sampling. Let's take the example of the school again, grade 7 to grade 13. There are 200, 200, 150 and 100 students, for instance, in different grades. If you place the names of each grade in a separate box and we decide that we need 20% of this population as part of our sample. So therefore we take 20% of 200, that is 40, 20% 20 of 150, that is 30, 20% 20 of 100, that is 20. At the end you will have a sample of 200 with 20% from each grade. 
no grade is over or underrepresented or not represented in the sample. Why do we call it stratified random sample? Simply because we stratify means we divide the population into different subgroups and then we take an equal proportion using a random sampling method from each subgroup. The last random sampling method we are going to consider is cluster sampling. Cluster means a group which is mutually homogeneous but internally heterogeneous. Mutually homogeneous means that they can be classified as a large group having a shared general characteristic. Homogeneous means of the same kind. Internally heterogeneous means that within the cluster there are differences among the people. Heterogeneous means diverse in character or content. Let us take an example of teachers. Teachers are a homogeneous group of professionals. They're all called teachers. But teachers can be clustered into heterogeneous groups as they are not similar in certain respects. For instance, they may be working in different types of schools, state schools in rural areas or state schools in urban areas, private schools in rural areas or private schools in urban areas. Within each cluster, there will be people of different sects, age, teaching experience, teaching different subject areas. The researcher must make sure that all the variables are captured from within each cluster. So the multiple variables would be private urban by age, private urban by sex, private urban by subject area, or private urban by years of experience. Therefore, the clusters can be private schools, male, less than 10 years of experience, teaching languages, or private schools, male, more than 10 years of experience, teaching languages. You must have guessed that there will be many more clusters similar to these ones. What would be the final choice of the sample that the sociologist would consider? Once the sociologist identifies all the clusters, she could draw a random sample from each cluster depending on the size of the sample she needs for the study. So a good definition of cluster sampling would be a sampling method used for a heterogeneous group which is categorized in subgroups clusters based on certain significant variables. A random sampling is drawn from each cluster. In the second lesson on sampling, we saw how we define sampling. We explain different methods of random sampling. We give examples of each method of random sampling, namely simple random, stratified random, and cluster sampling. Let us now look at some of the questions you might get on this topic. What is a representative sample for marks? What is a random sampling for marks? Give two examples of random sampling, six marks. Explain two types of random sampling, eight marks. Differentiate between simple and stratified random sampling, ten marks. Explain how a stratified random sampling is carried out, 8 marks, and what is cluster sampling, 8 marks. We have reached the end of this lesson. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope to see you back very soon for the next lesson. This lesson is available on YouTube MIE Hub. I just wish to remind you that all the pictures used in this presentation are from open source upslash.com.